Sir David, as somebody who knew the Queen personally, today's funeral must have been a very emotional affair for you. Not just me, Roz, for everybody. I mean, it was completely overwhelming. The silence in the Abbey as the coffin was brought in was quite extraordinary. You could have heard a pin drop and uh, the Chief Minister and I were sitting with all the heads of the Commonwealth nations, the heads of the overseas territories. We were all there, all in awe of what was going on at that moment. Well, I think it has been a remarkable moment to, to see how all of the representatives of the nations on the planet, some of them counting Her Majesty as their head of state, but not all of them, were entirely in one unified moment of respect for Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. I mean, you could have cut the respect with a knife in the Abbey today. Everyone was there to pay homage to a person who has given so much to the world and so much to the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth, of course. But for the whole world to congregate as it has today is a demonstration in the service that we've seen today of the service that Her Majesty the Queen gave in life. Um, and I think that was palpable today and the United Kingdom, I think, has done itself, the Commonwealth and the Overseas Territories proud in the way that they have laid to rest Her Majesty the Queen. So, David, you were able to pay your respects to the Queen as she lay in state in Westminster Hall. Can you share something of that deeply private moment with us? Ross, I think it was um, for two, two reasons for me, having worked very closely with Her Majesty. She was the most gentle woman and to a degree one was uh, lifted by her spirit the whole time. Um, and I did find it very moving, personally. But if I may say so, what overwhelmed me most was being with the Chief Minister and representing little Gibraltar. And yet the whole time we've been here, we have been treated on the same terms as great nations around the world. And I think Her Majesty the Queen would have loved the concept that Gibraltar was represented on that occasion. So for me, if, I, if you to ask me, my overwhelming feeling was pride in being with Fabian and representing uh, the people of Gibraltar. Chief Minister, can I ask your thoughts as well? Yes, a little like His Excellency, I thought it was an important moment for the people of Gibraltar to be represented at the lying in state at Westminster Hall, principally because the royal family gave us Her Majesty. They gave Her Majesty to the people of the United Kingdom, of the Commonwealth and of the overseas territories to lay in state at uh, Westminster Hall. And with His Excellency, you know, together the elected representative of the people of Gibraltar, Her Majesty's representative as he was on his appointment now, His Majesty's representative, were able to represent the people of Gibraltar at that moment, in that historic place, which is Westminster Hall, and pay respects on behalf of all of those who we represent. So all of the people of the Commonwealth, all of the people of the United Kingdom, and indeed the people of the territories, including Gibraltar, were able to pay their respects there. And then all of the heads of government of the rest of the world also wanted to pay respects. But for us, I think, for those of us who are of the United Kingdom, of the Commonwealth, or of the overseas territories, having the opportunity to make that representational moment of respect to Her Majesty laying in state, I think was hugely important and meaningful. I mean, it's been an extraordinary time with so many heads of state being uh, flown into London for the funeral. There was a state event held at Buckingham Palace last night. What can you share with us about that event? Well, it was an opportunity for, for us to see members of the royal family, to extend condolences. I was able to speak to His Majesty the King and to the Queen Consort. I was able to speak to other Commonwealth and overseas territory politicians and politicians from around the world. And of course, you know, this is a moment of grief. It's also an opportunity for a small element of diplomacy as well. That's why it's a, it's a state event. Um, and I think that the, the incredible thing was to see so many heads of state represented. I mean, I've been to a number of events in the time that I've been Chief Minister, including the Olympics, which of course brings together people from around the world, but nothing quite like this. Sir David, 
Well, I think his achievement is to said we were privileged to meet um, many members of the royal family, uh, politicians, diplomats, heads of state, uh, and incredibly, if I might say so, it was a, um, a very happy occasion. Um, everyone coming together, exchanging stories about how they met the Queen and, uh, and the Duke of Edinburgh over their time uh, together. And um, we came away feeling very privileged to have been invited uh, to attend such a, a, an enormous function. I don't think there's been that many heads of state together in Buckingham Palace for a very, very long time. And to be there representing Gibraltar was uh, an honour. So David, the news on the death of the Queen in Gibraltar was received with great sadness and regret. But being in London is a whole different thing. I mean, the atmosphere here has been incredible. Can I get your impressions on that? Um, two impressions, Roz. Firstly, the number of people that have come from all around the world just to be here. I've just come out of the hotel, I've talked to a couple that have just come from New Orleans. They flew in because they wanted to be here to say their farewells to the Queen. Uh, and that has been remarkable. The second thing I would say is that the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth have done us proud. The way this has been organised, it's been an immense, immense organisational feat. I have been blown away by the way that the United Kingdom has received and looked after the world. Um, when England and Britain and the United Kingdom do something well, my goodness, they do it well. We can be proud, can't we? Well, if only there was a World Cup of pomp and circumstance rather than football, <laughs> we'd win it every time. We would indeed. Um, I must ask you for your thoughts, this, your reflections on the fact that, you know, today is the final day of official mourning and uh, the Queen will be buried at Windsor Castle tonight. Tomorrow really begins the new Carolean age. Uh, can I just ask for your thoughts going forward now with King Charles III? Well, I think that very little will change and I think that's the importance of the crown, that it is above politics, it is above the sort of temporal change that we see in so many other fields, but the king will now bring his way and style of doing things to the monarchy, which will likely be more modern, likely be more slimmed down, of course very much taken from the traditions of his mother Her Majesty. We can expect things to be very similar to before and very different to before and that contradiction is what will mark a new way of doing things. I always say that you know, even when you have people who represent the same thing, different people express their views in a different way, represent them in a different way and that I think is what we will expect. But the great continuity that the monarchy gives us I think is the benefit of what being British is and gives us and having a crown uh, gives us and I think that is what we can expect. Very little change but things will be that little bit different. Uh, what are your thoughts? Oh I think as, as uh, the Chief Minister has said I think he's going to be an outstanding king. Uh, as I said in Holy Trinity Cathedral only a few days ago Her Majesty the Queen left us two great gifts. One was her example and we will try and follow her example and the second thing, if Her Majesty is looking down on us now, she's got a big smile on her face because she's seeing the crown just passing seamlessly to King Charles, who of course has been learning from her for 73 years. We're going to get a king who is more experienced than any, any king has come to the throne before. I think he will follow where his mother left off and we will be well served by the monarchy going in for the next 25, 30 years. Finally, before I let you both go, I must say, uh, my, I don't have the best of memories, but it does seem that the government of Gibraltar and the governor of Gibraltar seems to enjoy a, an extraordinary close friendship as well as professional relationship than I can ever recall before. Can I ask you both to comment on, on your relationship? Well, I mean, I must say that uh, we've, we've worked very well together from the moment that David arrived in Gibraltar. 
Um, the, the fact is that I've gone on very well with all the governors that I have had the pleasure of working with and serving with. With David, because he is a lawyer, because we're at a time when we're looking at treaties, um, and because he is who he is, our relationship has been extraordinarily close. And seeing how other governors and uh, elected representatives of the overseas territories get on or don't get on, and we've had a bit of an insight into that in the past uh, 48 hours, it really is a privilege to be able to count with someone like David uh, as part of Team Gibraltar. So David? Well, apart from the fact that the Chief Minister is rather slow at getting up the rock on his electric bike, and I leave him behind, uh, apart from that, it is a privilege to work with Fabian. He's going through, he and his government have got many difficulties, not least getting us through this treaty. And when I was asked to come to this job, I was asked to help the government of Gibraltar in whatever small way I could, and that's what I'm trying to do over these difficult times. And uh, I hope that my successor will have an easier time, but I will leave in 18 months, two years' time uh, with the privilege of knowing that I've been a, a bit of a support to Fabian and his government over the last two and a half years. If I may, I hope my successor will have an easier time too. <laughs>